Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all of you. Waalaikumsalam, sir. Okay, hopefully you are still okay. So, uh, you have done your practical test with me, Alhamdulillah. So, uh, give me about one week to uh, mark the video based on the rubric. And you will get the marks uh, after the semester uh, after the Senate eh, approved the marks eh, for it. Okay, so in this week, we will do the next uh, uh, topic, eh, which is called on finite element method to solve a beam problem. And the beam problem that you will do today is based on a two dimensional uh, element, uh, which is a new topic to you because previously you have done uh, to analyze uh, structures based on one dimensional elements. Eh? So today you will do more advanced uh, element called as two dimensional element. OK, I will share my uh, PowerPoints. <clears throat> okay, so this is the topic using final element method software to solve civil engine problem, which is focused on beam two dimensional structures. Okay? So, why I'm using two dimensional structures, there is a reason for it that will be discussed in the next uh, few minutes after this. And as usual, uh, the lesson outcome for this topic is to understand how to model or how to discretize or how to idealize the given beam. So I don't want to cover about trust because it has been covered last week. To idealize the given beam problem by a finite element software. And after that, we will incorporated a lot of things, uh, uh, not only the boundary conditions, but we will also incorporate the material properties, the section properties, uh, the loading and so on, so that we can have uh, the realistic of the given structures. Eh? And the software itself will do this stiffness metric assembly by automatic, so we don't have to do this manually. And by using the MACRI solver, we will solve uh, the unknown parameters of the structural system. So we will start by solving the displacement. OK, so soon after you get the displacement, we can get uh, the secondary uh, parameters such as the stresses. So the stresses can be bending stresses, shear stresses, shear stresses, and also uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, bending shear and also axial uh, stresses. Eh? Uh, so as I said before, we have to model the given metro properties, uh, element types. Eh? So we have a lot of element types here to do today, which is 2D elements. We have to model also the given boundary condition loads on the civil engine problem. Eh? So by using macro software. So these all are the lesson outcome that we want to cover to today. And if you uh, see carefully, it is almost similar what we have done two weeks ago on the other structures. Okay? Only the different thing is the element types, yeah? which is we have to use two dimension elements. OK, when we want to use beam element, because if you remember, we have done about bar element, thrust element before this. Now you are dealing with beam element. And when we want to perform to use this element, if you see that this kind of criteria. First of all, if you found that the length of the element is much greater than the width or the depth of the element, then it is possible to use beam element. Okay? So if let's say you have a structure which is something like this. So whether it is a uh, straight up or if they say the 
structure will be on horizontal face. If you found that the length, this is the length, this is also the length, is greater than the width. So you have width, yeah, or the depth, yeah. So you can use now the beam element. Okay? So that is the uh, one of the simple criteria. Secondly, if the element have constant cross-section properties, but I don't want you to limit yourself to this part because you can also have to use beam element when you have none constant or none uniform. Also possible to use beam element. So not only in constant cross-section, but you also can apply to none uniform cross-section properties. Eh? So such as none uniform, it can be something like this. Maybe your cross-section will be smaller there and suddenly going bigger to the ends. So you can use also beam element here yeah, because the length of this element is greater than the width or the diameter of the element. Okay? So this is the non-uniform, the non-uniform cross-section. Okay? Uh, the element must transfer shear and also bending moment. So you can use beam element. Okay? So if you want to possess a structure that can transfer these two forces, moment and shear, then there is a right time to use beam element. Okay? And uh, the element must able to transfer distributed load across its length. So if let's say I have a, a beam structure like this, where you have to transfer the uniform loads on its member, eh? let's say this is member number one, then you have to use beam element. Eh? But if let's say I have a member here, which is loaded axially, so you can use a truss element or bar element. And so depending on the nature of how the load is being transferred to the structure, you must use suitable elements, eh? whether to use bar ke, beam ke, truss ke, uh, so that you can uh, simulate the realistic of that uh, structure behavior. Okay? So these are some tips when you will be able to use beam element. Okay, as I said before, uh, beam problem can be modeled by two approaches. Okay, the first simple approach is to use line element. Okay? This is one dimensional element where you can use a beam element just only model as a line. Another one is the two dimensional element, which is we will use a concept called as plane stress element where you model, let's say, your beam here. So your beam is a 2D here. Okay. Uh, let's say to be 3D. So you model it as a surface. And I will divide it into several plane stress element. So this is my first plane stress element. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. So the number of element is up to me. And as a rule of thumb, the greater is the number of the element, the better will be the accuracy. Eh? So uh, we have two approaches here, but I'm, I will be interested to use this part rather than this part because this part you can do it on your own. Eh? Uh, this part is almost like the beam, uh, sorry, the truss and uh, person, bar element before. So now I want to model your beam by using please truss element or two dimensional element where each of the element has its own nodes. Okay. So you can have a lot of nodes there. Where each of the node have two degrees of freedom, where you have the freedom in X, moving in X direction. So let's say this is your X, can move in Y direction vertically. <clears throat> and uh, so the same thing for all other nodes. Eh? Okay. Uh, most uh, of beam have a strong axis of bending and weak axis of bending. Eh? Every beam has this, the strong axis of bending and weak axis of bending. So this is, uh, if you still remember the concept of a uh, moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. Okay. So usually if you have a beam like this, 
And let's see, this is my cross section axis. Let's say this is your kata lah. This is your part C Y. This is part C Z. And this is your X axis lah. Okay. So if let's say my width yeah, is to be B. And my height of the beam, of the depth of beam kata lah H. If let's say your B is much more smaller than H. Therefore, your I Z Z will be greater than i y y eh? you can you can uh, prove it so when your i z z is greater than i y y meaning that your z axis is the strong axis the strong axis for bending moment lah. whereas your y y axis is the weakest axis for bending moment so this fact should be known because you studied your upper structure mechanics your autophone solid mechanic in your semester two subjects. Eh? Okay. And there are a lot of ways to model the beam by 2D. So under 2D, we have a lot of uh, means. Eh? We can use either plane stress or plane strain. But in this case, I want to use only the plane stress. And as a homework, you do it on your own. You study what is plane strain. Okay, what is plane strain? I will not talk about it. You can try to look on your textbooks or any relevant books to know the difference between plane stress and plane strain. Okay, so what is plane stress? Plane stress is where you have, uh, you are allowing that uh, stresses develop in plane. Okay? So let's say this is your beam that is located in your x axis and y axis so you try to know the behavior of that structure in the x y plane only so what is the meaning of this meaning that any response in z directions so z direction is when that is the direction of as is pointing pointing to your face now so the information of response in Z is not allowed. Okay? We don't care uh, any result in Z direction, meaning that the stresses in Z will be zero. So don't, there's no stresses developed in Z axis. The stresses only develop in X, Y plane. Maksudnya apa? Meaning that you have stresses in X, X and also stresses in Y, Y and also the shear force in x y so you have three kind of stresses developed by using plane stress but the stresses in z direction is assumed to be zero uh, ataupun dalam kata lain uh, the the true thickness eh, the true thickness response is ignored kita tak payah ambil tahu pun pasal z eh, because the behavior is only limited to xy plane okay and there are a lot of 2d elements in macway we have a lot of and the basic one will be the triangular elements second one is the quadrilateral element eh? this is triangular element the second one is the quadrilateral right quadrilateral element okay so you may see that uh, under triangle triangle element you have two types of triangle the first one is the three noded triangle where you can see that you have three nodes and the much more better version is the six noded triangle element where you have a midpoint you have a midpoint here that is in between the existing nodes eh? and this one is much more better than this eh? because eh, when you have a lot of nodes therefore you can have a lot of information response from the beam eh? however triangular element is not stable enough eh, from point uh, numerical point of view that's why we have another element called as quadrilateral element or some people call it a rectangular elements where you have four nodes elements 
and the much better version is you have eight nodes. Okay? So you have eight nodes on one element only. So this is much more better than this and much more better than triangle. But why they put, uh, they invent the triangle element? Because a lot of reason for it. Even though triangle element is not so good as four noded uh, or rectangular element, it has certain applications. Eh? So if let's say I want to model my structure to be a curved beam like this. So it is better to model that curvy part by using triangle. Okay? You can use triangle because it is much more better to cover that curvy part. So that's why you still need to use triangular elements. Eh? And a rectangular element is usually used for uh, typical uh, typical shapes such as a rectangular like this. So I can divide my beam, let's say, to rectangular elements like this. And I I may maybe not use triangular elements here. Okay. As I said before, for three noded triangle, it is a less accurate results. Okay. And triangular element uh, that you see before, which is this one, is the worst one. It's the most worst to the element uh, because uh, this uh, three noded element has certain issue with stiffness. Eh? The other masala skate. Uh, but by using triangle element, they, you have uh, you can gain uh, advantages where your analysis is much more simplified, and then you can get your results quickly. Eh? Rather by using four noded element where the analysis is much more complicated, you need high computer memory and longer time. Eh? So uh, three noded element is useful if you want to get preliminary results of your uh, structure. Uh, so after you get the preliminary result, you get the member sections. Then you can go detail by using rectangle elements. So that's why you, is, uh, the three noded elements still exist in the market eh? because of this issue and also for, for catering this issue where you have a circular geometry. Yeah? Six noded triangle element. This is the best, uh, a best version of the three noded element where you have mid nodes in between of the existing nodes. Yeah? Because you want to improve the, uh, the problem of the three noded element that you have before. So that's why they invent another element called a six noded. Yeah? Okay. And as I said before, this type of uh, target element still you need more time and you need more computational computer power to run the analysis. Lateral element, the four nodes, as I said, this is much more better than triangular elements and it is much more accurate eh, compared to three noded element. So if you compare that element, this element with this three noded triangle element, this is much more superior, eh? much more accurate compared to the three noded element. Okay. And if you see, if you want to improve your analysis, maybe you found that the analysis by using four noded element is not enough. You can use the more advanced uh, element, which is eight noded and as I said, when you have more number of nodes here, then you have to use much more better computer. Lah. And the time for process will be a bit longer eh, than this uh, four noded elements. OK, any questions so far before we proceed to one simple example? Any questions? Ada soalan nak? Tak dengar Fajal? No, no. Okay. okay. Kalau tak ada sekejap ya. Sekejap. Saya ada terima sekejap ni SMS penting daripada faculty. Sekejap ya.
Okay. Okay, so this is one example. Uh, a very simple beam uh, is a cantilever beam. Lah. Cantilever beam where is a uh, the length of the beam is one meter and the cross section is 150 by 300. Eh? So if let's say we see from, we view the section from here, the cross section will be 154 by 300 millimeter, eh? millimeter. And uh, the beam has one point load acting at the ends, which is four kilonewton. And the material of the beam is uh, with the Young model of 200 gigapascal. And the Poisson ratio is 0.25. Okay? So you are required to estimate the maximum bending stress and the maximum deflection by using finite element software and to use 2D beam element. Okay, so this is my first question. My second question, if let's say, how about if the beam have a circular hollow section? So, katakan ada circular hollow section here. Dia ada lubang. Eh? With the diameter of 150. So, what will be the response? What will be the response of the maximum uh, of the maximum bending stress and maximum deflection? So, I think the first part, the problem number one is, is can be done by using your manual calculation. But for the second part, I don't think you can use manual calculation because you cannot include this circular effect to the beam and you can get the value of the maximum bending stress and the maximum deflection. So this one you can done by manual, but this one, it is a bit tricky by using manual because you this is more uh, using non-linear finite element. Eh? OK, so how to deal with this? So we will start with the first problem, ah, the cantilever beam. So if you uh, the notes will be given to you. If you see carefully the notes in this, uh, it has a lot of description there. But I don't want to go through with that. I want just to explain here. So let's say if your beam has been given as a cantilever. Okay, so I have to create my nodes coordinate first. Okay, and this is your x axis. This is your y. Okay, uh, the beam length is one meter. The cross section is 150, which is 0.15 lah. And the depth here is 0.3. Okay, you have point loads here for kilonewtons. So, uh, if let's say my 0, 0 is, sorry, 0, 0 katalah di bawah ni. This one will be 1, 0. This one will be 1.3. And this nodes will be 0, 0 0.3. So we will create that four nodes before uh, by using our MacWay. Eh? Okay, so as usual, we will create my first nodes, my second nodes, which is here, my third nodes, 0.3, and my fourth node will be zero. Okay, so you have four nodes there. Okay, that is the nodes created. So now I want to join those nodes by using elements. And as I said, we are using two dimensional elements. Eh? Two dimensional, we have four options, whether to use the uh, three noded triangular, six noded triangular, four noded quadrilateral, and eight noded quadrilateral. So for the simplification, because uh, our software is only limited to 1,000 nodes, so I will use quad four, okay, quad four, and then I will select my nodes either in the clockwise or anticlockwise. Eh? So please maintain 
the way how you choose the notes. So I will choose, let's say, clockwise. One, two, three, and four. So you have created now my uh, plain stress element for this beam. So it's not 1D, eh? it's a 2D. You can see that it's a 2D. So if you view in the uh, isometric view, you can see it's a 2D. Eh? Okay, so I will go back to my previous uh, view. So select the elements by using these select elements. Okay, right click your mouse. So I have to divide this into several elements. So I have to click the mesh tools here. Refine and click custom. Okay, click custom. So this is where you can divide your horizontal and vertical. So R here is the division in the vertical. So let's say in the vertical, I will choose four divisions. For uh, X axis, let's say I will choose to be eight. Okay, so I think that is. Okay, can you see that? You have four division and eight. Yeah, so maybe maybe I want to use this is to be my show sepatutnya 8 kali 4. Eh? Okay, never mind. I will undo back. Refine. So yang ini sepatutnya tadi adalah uh, 8. This is, is 4. Eh? Because I want to create that my vertical to be 4, my horizontal to be 8. Eh? So click uh, the apply button. Okay, now it is good. So how many division is up to you lah. You can divide as many as you want. But remember that your notes number is limited to 1000. Eh? So if you want to see how many notes, you can click on the mesh tool and notes element list. You have now 45 notes. Eh? The, the maximum is 1000 notes. So you can divide as many as you wish, provided that you are not exceeding that 1000 number of notes eh? because this is a free version. Okay, now I want to uh, define what is the thickness and the metal properties of this. So select all of that elements. Right click your mouse here. Assign new material and click shell membrane element. The thickness, if you remember that, is 150. Eh? Tebal 150. Eh? Tebal 150. So I will click here. 0.15 and my uh, young molus is 250, 200 and my ratio is 0.25 is it correct yeah betul, 200 and 2 point, 0 0.25 eh? okay just click okay and if i view the thickness you can see that the thickness eh, by clicking this button and i can view in the isometric view and you can see that it is now having thickness of 150 here. Then yang 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 bawah ni adalah uh, 300 eh. Okay, you know eh? So this is 150 uh, width and 300 depth lah. Okay. So we I will off this show element surface. Okay. Apa lagi nak kena buat? Uh, next is to define my parts here to be fixed. So I will select my nodes here by activate the nodes. Okay. And in actual, it is not uh, the nodes is being fixed, but this along of this edge to be fixed. So I have to select this part, select faces. So can you see that all of this line is trying to be fixed? Okay. And right click your mouse, loose and constraint, and new fix supports, and click OK. Okay, bye. And then that next part is to define that 4 kN. So I will select this node to be activated. Right click your mouse, and loose and constraint, new force. Dalam arah Y, which is 4 kN. Okay. So, I will name, uh, sebelum kita name, kita tukar jadi 2D. Eh. 2D and CCX. Eh. 
save as kita bagi namalah benda ni sebagai let's say beam tanpa lubang katalah saya bagi nama beam tanpa lubang ok we try to run it hopefully there is no problem harapnya hijau ok ada error apa error saya pun tak pasti apa masalah dia kita kena tengok So what is the problem here? Okay, never mind. I will do it again. Terpaksa buat balik semula. Eh. Sebab Mac ini software free. Dia ada masalah kadang-kadang. Eh. So never mind. We will do it again. No problem. So you can view back what is going on here. Okay, we'll see back. Okay, create the quad four, betul. So, tengok balik dekat mesh tu, takut ada benda yang tersilap eh. Okay, element memang satu, betul. Correct. Set the elements and we want to create the mesh. Refine custom Yang ni saya nak buat ini 8 Yang ni 4 Okay And define the material This will be 0.15 And this one to be 200 lah This is 0.25 eh Okay So I will select this Fix support, okay. And this one to be F loads, new force lah. In kilo, which is 94. Kita save dulu. Okay. So saya bagi dua nama lah sebab senang nanti kalau jadi apa-apa hal saya ada backup lagi saya buat 21 satu. Okay. So I will change this to be my 2D and CC accent. Hopefully there is no problem. Okay ada problem tak apa. Kita buka balik yang yang ada lubang ni satu ni. No. Okay I will try, uh, try to use static 3D. Okay so Meaning that you, you cannot change to static 2D. Just maintain to static 3D. Dia tak ada problem sekarang. Okay. Uh, view back in the XY front. Kita zoom besar sikit. Okay, now we want to view what? Apa result dia nak? Dia nak tahu maximum deflections kan? So deflection will be in Y. So if I click in Y, you can see that kalau saya zoom kecil sikit ni. And I will change this to be millimeter. So you may see that on the left side here, it is zero, yang warna merah ni, and gradually increase the deflection until to the right part, where the maximum deflection is 0.1974. So, dekat tempat yang belakang sekali, yang belakang kanan sekali, dia punya deflection paling besar lah, logik lah, because I can't deliver kan. So, if I want to view the deflection, so that is the deflections, eh? And if I want to animate, you may see that this is the deflection of that beam load and unload lah. Okay. You are the load, unload, load, unload. Okay. And if I want to view the deflection in Z, memang tak ada eh. Nampak? Z tak ada zero. Eh? Because we are not allowing any stresses develop in Z. But in X, we have several displacement lah. Eh? Sebab bila you melentur ke bawah beam tu, dia mesti ada pergerakan arah X eh? dan arah Y. Sekentak. You must have a simultaneous uh, displacement in X and Y. Eh? Dia tak turun dalam arah Y itu saja. Dia mesti bergerak sedikit arah X. Eh? Okay. So, if let's say I want to view my stresses, so I can click this to solution. So, kalau kata you nak gambar ni, nak gambar ni boleh, tak ada masalah. You can click on the view, sorry, on the edit, copy image. Copy image. Okay. So, dia dah copy sini. 
and the image is being copied tapi saya tak tahu kenapa is denied so kalau tak boleh juga kita kena gunakan screenshot macam biasalah eh? gunakan snipping tool lah kalau dia tak boleh kita buat cara kita lah eh? you can click this and if they say you want to view the displacement in form of values you can click this button okay so let's say I want to click on the uh, nodes coordinates I want to see the displacement in X and Y Z tak perlulah sebab kosong kan so just click update Okay, maybe elements kot ni. Eh? Pun dia tak keluar. So, sebelah ini kena pilih sepatutnya. So, I click will uh, click all. I will click updates. And you can see that the displacement there. Eh? So, maybe notes kot. Eh? Dia akan keluar displacement. Ah, yes. Notes. Eh? The notes will give you the displacement in X and Y lah. Notes number one tak ada displacement. So, di mana notes number one? Notes number one yang kat sini lah. Dia akan, dia akan fix kan. Tak boleh bergerak X, tak boleh gerak arah Y kan. And the last notes also will be zero. Notes number four pun mesti zero. Nampak ni? Four ni. Eh? Four dekat mana? Four dekat sini tadi kan? Eh? Okay. So if you want to view the display uh, stresses. Sebab soalan tadi tanya about stresses kan? Ah ni, stresses. I can click on the solution here. Uh, new force and click on, I think click on the soft all configuration. Okay. So, you can click on this Von Mr. Stress. Okay. You can click on the bottom element. So, this is the stresses at the bottom. If they say the stresses at the middle, which is something like this. And the top will be something like this. Okay. So, the stresses usually saya akan letak dalam megapascal lah. Eh? Much more better. So, if you want, let's say, to see the reaction force, boleh juga click kat sini. Yeah. And let's say the reaction forces in mana tadi? Ah, kat sini. In Y. So, dekat sini you nampak. You have only stresses reaction dekat ujung lah. Sebab tempat tu memang ada fixed uh, kan. Yang lain tak ada. So, the maximum stresses in Y adalah 2364. Yang positif. And you have also negative forces somewhere at the middle here. Yeah. In X pun you ada. But in Z memang tak adalah kosong. Okay. Ada tak soalan setakat ni untuk uh, beam without uh, circle holes? Any questions? Setakat ni okey. Setakat ni okey okay, eh. Sekejap saya nak cuba ubah ni kepada ni. Boleh tak saya run? Okey. So masa kalau nak ubah pada 2D pun boleh eh. Tapi cuma jangan tukar kepada sisi X. Dia tekan sisi X dia ada problem. Eh. So, kalau tengok pada 2D, so if I want to solve all configuration, okay, I think the same result juga lah. Tak banyak beza pun, same result eh. The same result, tak ada beza pun. Okay, the same results also that you get. But this one much more better DP results eh. Von Mr. Strange, you akan dapat lebih better. So this is in megapascal. So this is the stresses developed inside the 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 at the beam lah. Eh? If you are using static 2D. Eh? Okay, now we want to um, do the next part. Mana pula tadi ni? Saya dah padam lah. Dah keluar terus. Eh? If you have a beam with a circular holes. Ada lubang kat sini. So how to do that? It's very easy. Eh? Uh, I, want, I, I will start to model the circular part first. The circular part by using um, tools from here called a split mesh. Okay, split mesh. And I have a lot of options here. So the best option from these five uh, template is the square with circular holes. So but ini tempat yang kita nak buat ni kan, ada lubang tu kan? Kan? And you have a lot of option lah. You nak, you boleh off dengan on ni. Okay? Kalau saya klik ni, masa you akan buang ni. Nampak? Dia punya quadrant eh? Dia boleh buang. Eh, kalau buang tu, tak adalah. So, you you need four quadrants. And then I have to specify the outer radius. Eh? Outer radius maksudnya from here to the top tu berapa. So, from the middle to the top, maksudnya dah tentulah 0.15. Kan? So, I will define this to be 0.15 meter. 
and the inner radius meaning that from here to here uh, the inner radius dia sudah tentulah separuh daripada diameter lubang ni which is uh, 75mm lah so 75mm maksudnya 75 exponent negative 3 eh? so you get this and you can play around with the density mesh lah kalau nak tambah ni boleh, you boleh tak ada masalah cumanya saya takut nanti bila terlalu banyak your number of notes here you tak campur lagi sebelah kiri yang belah kanan eh will be more than 1000 uh, yang itu saya risau so saya akan buat basic je dulu tu saja you can try on your own so when i click ok you have developed some part of that beam eh? so this dimension from here to here adalah 300 mm eh? dari sini ke atas pun 300 tapi kita nak kita punya beam to be 1 meter long eh? so meaning that from the left side to the mid of the circular hole dia adalah 500 mm but from the mid circular hole to the edge of the circular hole is 0.15 eh 0.15 lah ah uh, 0.15 lah so maksudnya yang lebih ni dah tentu 500 tolak 150 berapa eh? 500 tolak 150 dapat berapa tu 500 tolak 150 you get 350 so i have to uh, protrude this Eh, I have to uh, extrude this ke sebelah kiri sebanyak 350. So, I have to select that notes. I have to select this face. Nampak ni? Dipilih. And I will to extrude this to the left side which is in X negative. Sebanyak berapa? Sebanyak 0.35. Berapa division? Katalah 3 bahagian. So, I will click OK. Can you see that now it's been protruded to the left side? So it's distance from here. So kalau saya activate notes ni, this distance eh, to this distance will be 500. Eh? So I will make the same thing on this part and extrude it to the left. Eh, sorry, to the right with the same thickness and with the same division. And I will get now my whole beam. Eh? So the distance from here to here is 1 meter. Eh? So kalau kat betul, cuba tengok. Yang ni kalau tengok koordinat di bawah ni. Cuba tengok koordinat di bawah ni. When I pick this point, this is negative 0 0.5. When I pick this point, it's positive 0 0.5. So tolak kena dapat 1 meter. Eh? So I have already defined my beam. So yang lain, buat macam biasa lah. Eh? So we have to fix this. We have to fix this by using fix apa ni, support. Yeah? Uh, jangan lupa all of the element will have uh, material properties. The thickness is still 0.15. Eh, yang lain sama saja. Sama macam tadi. Sebiji macam tadi juga. Yang ini tadi 200. Eh. This is 0.25. And then you have one point loot at the top which is uh, 4 kiloliton. Mana tadi? New force. Mana lagi? Ah ni. Kilo Newton eh. Negative 4 lah. So yang ni kita biar je. Sebab jangan kacau je dengan letak siap. Kalau letak siap nanti ada error eh. So I will name this as beam with lubang. Beam lubang. Okay. I will save this and try to run. Hopefully there is no problem. Okay. Hijau. Cantik. And the displacement will be something like this. But you see a bit a uh, different pattern. Okay. So nampak tak dekat lubang tu dia ada line pattern eh and then the shape of the displacement will be something like this. Okay. So the displacement maximum adalah 0 0.02272. Dia lebih lagi displace why? Because you have lubang. So when you have a hole there, the beam is less stiff. Bila less stiff senang nak tekan ke bawah eh berbanding dengan beam yang betul, -betul yang solid. Bila solid dia tegar, dia rigid, dia nak tekan tu sukar. And that's why uh, the answer from the previous beam will be much more smaller a bit than this. You will compare tadi. Eh? And if let's say I want to view uh, the stresses, maybe I have to solve all configuration. Okay, so I can see the stresses here. And I can click. Uh, so maybe I can use my 2D lagi bagus. Kita buat 2D. So kalau tu ni saya run balik, harap ni tak ada masalah. Okay, tak ada masalah pun. Element, so you may see that a bit different. 
stress tadi yang you dapat sebelum ni dengan yang sekarang ni berbeza sedikit eh. The maximum stress in megapascal, if you see carefully, is about paling maksimum adalah region ni warna merah ni eh. Nampak ni 1.839, so dekat sini tempat yang ada fix. So when you fix this part, you will get a maximum stress ya. Yeah. Okay. And some here will also have a bit stress, so kalau saya zoom, dia warna orange ya. Yeah. Orange. So orange will be 1.637 something lah. Eh? Uh, which is second uh, bigger than the, uh, the part where you fix. Eh? And uh, it is almost zero in the middle. You may nampak ni almost zero. Eh? Because centroid. Eh? And at the circular hole, you have a lot of stresses there. So maybe kalau tengok dramatic lagi, I can activate the thickness. Okay, this is much more dramatic. Ha, nampak? Much more dramatic dia punya effect. You boleh tengok thickness eh. So, I can rotate this. So, you may see that. And I can zoom to the hole. And you can see that where is the part of the hole having a lot of stresses. So, you can put a reinforcement on that location. Kalau ada banyak stresses lah. Especially kalau stresses tu dalam bentuk tensile eh. So, tensile positif lah. So, kat sini tak ada region. Ada yang tensile eh. Nampak ni warna kuning ni tensile eh. So you must put a lot, uh, some st steel there. Kalau material ini buat daripada concrete. Eh? Sebab concrete lemah dalam tegangan kan. Kan? Dia lemah dalam tegangan. So sebaik saja, uh, semuanya, semuanya stresses eh. Semuanya tensile stress. Tak ada pun compression. Semuanya tensile. But the, the maximum one is yellow. Dekat tempat lubang ni dekat yellow. So di sini you kena letak reinforcement lebih lah. Dekat sini, dekat tempat lubang ni. Eh? So I can view this thing much more better and you can decide on how to produce your reinforcement details. Nampak tu? You boleh tengok kat situ. So this cannot be done by manual calculation if you do your solid mechanics. Eh? You must use software like this so that you can investigate further the response of that structure. Okay, any questions so far for this? Ada soalan nak? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ada beza tak kalau kita set awal pakai CCX? Set in CCX? CCX tu cuma activated untuk setengah elemen saja. So, kena tengok manual book dia. CCX hanya untuk setengah-setengah elemen saja. So, dia tak apply pada semua elemen. So, maybe CCX can be done only by four bar and trust. Tetapi untuk 2D elemen, dia tak boleh dipakai. Ni, dia... Setengah elemen saja dia boleh pakai. Bila you click ini, dia akan fail sebab dia tak compatible. Atau malah bahasa Melayu, dia tak serasi. Dia tak serasi dengan elemen 2D ni. ni kita dah ada elemen 2D ni kan? Eh? So, you nak tahu, you kena buka manual Macway. Study. So, jangan uh, jangan kita ni, apa ni, uh, tak nak baca, baca. Kalau nak tahu, buka manual Macway. Ada kat sini. Help manual. Ah, carilah dalam tu gedung ilmu tu. Ah ni, carilah. Kalau dalam ni ada ceritanya. You cari. Banyak ni, you cari sendirilah. Eh, tapi apa yang saya tengok, uh, if you use this 2D element, dia tak serasi. Dia tak serasi. Kalau 1D serasi. Okay? Uh, sir. Ya, yeah, jap. Uh, yang... Uh, holo tu kan, tak, tak yeah. ya, satu meter tu tak payah termasuk holo kan Sir? Macam mana? One meter tak termasuk overlo? Uh, tadi, tadi yang sebuat yang hujung pada holo tu kan, yang dia oh. punya note tu kan 0.5 ke kiri, 0.5 ke kanan kan? Okay, yang, okay. yang tengah ni kira macam tak masuk ada punya tu, jarak dia. Tak, yang penting jarak dia one meter. Yang penting jarak dia one meter. Cuma saya develop this holo, saya bermula dengan circle dulu. Sebab tempat ni yang agak kritikal nak kita model. Yang lain dia tak ada lubang. That's why saya boleh tarik je sebelah kiri ni 0.35. Sebelah kanan ni 0.35. Dan yang balance ni kita ada 300. So betul lah 0.35. Campur 0.35 dapat 0.7. Campur 0.3 kita akan dapat 1 meter. Kan? Oh, okay, okay. Ha, sebab panjang beam tu 1 meter. Dia punya kedalaman 300. So jarak dari sini kalau tengok pun ini 0.15 nampak ni. Dekat bawah ni mesti negatif 0.15. So totally memang 
0.3. Cuma saya bermula modelkan dengan tempat yang complicated ni. Saya tak mulakan tempat yang simple ni. Yang simple tak apa, kita boleh extrude je. So, you nampak tak? Macro ini ada sedikit feature macam AutoCAD eh. Dia ada feature AutoCAD. You boleh extrude, you boleh copy nampak ni. You boleh revolve, you boleh putar, you boleh sweep dan macam-macam lagi lah. You boleh scale. So, kalau you rajin, you boleh guna feature-feature ni. You boleh cuba explore. Saya tak tunjuk lagi semuanya, saya tunjuk sebahagian je. You boleh copy, you boleh revolve, you boleh rotate, you boleh skala kan, it's up to you. So the best part of using software adalah you boleh tukar-tukar load ni, so kata you, you boleh eksperimen. So kalau kata load dia jadi lebih tinggi, what will be the response? So tak payah nak guna manual calculation at all, you just run it and you can observe whether the maximum, the deflection is boleh terima tidak. So maybe your design uh, tak benarkan beam you deflected lebih daripada katalah tak boleh lebih daripada 0.04 meter. So nampaknya paling tinggi kat sini kalau saya activate dia punya contour eh, yang warna biru ni dia dah dapat 0.05 which is more than 0.04 ah tak boleh lah. So bila tak boleh apa saya buat maybe saya boleh tambah tebal dia. So maybe 0.15 tak cukup. Maybe 0.6 maybe. Ha, lagi kecil ni 0.6 tebal gila lah. Cuba kita run. Kita run and see the deflection. Mana deflection tadi? Ah nampak dia dah kurang dah displacement dia. Tadi kita katakan maximum displacement 0.04 kan. Sekarang dah dapat 0.04 tapi rugi pula. Rugi sebab terlalu banyak, terlalu kurang sangat eh. Jadi kita kena main-main lah benda ni. So maybe concept ni terlalu tebal sangat, maybe 0.4. Kita kena jaga poket klien kita juga eh. Jangan kita shock sendiri lah. Ya. So, macam tengok. Cuba tengok displacement juga apa sang. 0.02. Kalau boleh nak dekat dengan 0.04. Ha, supaya kita jimat poket kita punya pelanggan. Katalah 0.25. Katakan. So, nampak saya tak perlu buat sebarang manual calculation pun. I just use the software. Ha, okay. Nampaknya dekat sikit. Cuba kita nipiskan sikit. Ni 0.03. Nipiskan sikit. Maybe 0.2. Run. So nampak tak kerja yang memang shock je main komputer. Ha, ni dah lebih dah. Kita nak 0.04. So maksudnya 0.2 tu tak boleh. Maybe 0.21 kot. Tebal sikit. Sikit tebal. So cuba tengok dia punya performance. Um, naikkan sikit lagi lah. Eh, maybe 0.2 kot. Tebal eh. Ha, inilah kerja you. You nak kena jadi engineer yang menjimatkan poket tapi selamat. Ataupun mengikut keperluan. Ah ini okey. So maksudnya tebal benda ni kena pakai 0.21. Kalau displacement maximum 0.04. So nampak tak you punya life much more easier by using software rather than by manual calculation. Tapi manual calculation kena tahu jugalah because you, you kena check eh. So you nampak eh. Ha, ni saya boleh rotate lah. So nampak dekat tempat ni dia ada displacement yang warna kuning ni diturun. Ha, dia ada perbezaan gradient dekat situ lah. That's a matter lah. So yang penting maximum depression does not more than 0.04. Kalau requirement macam tu lah. So nampak tak you you are playing with the structure by changing this and run and see the performance. Ataupun kalau you nak kurangkan stress. So katalah you nak kurangkan stress. So katalah stresses yang you benarkan. You tak boleh stress you paling maksimum tak boleh lebih dari tiga. Tapi sekarang dah lebih tiga kan nampak ni. Tiga masa tiga lima. Ha, so you kena play around lah. So maybe saya boleh tebalkan lagi. Tebalkan lagi maybe point three. Point three eh. So kita run and see what is the stress. Ah two point two. Terlalu rendah sangat. Ah, ah You kena pandai-pandai main lah. Maybe two, two, two five. Run. And see the stress. 2.7. Okay, tak cukup lagi. So, kita kita main-main benda ni. Katalah 0.27. Run. And see the stresses. Okay, tak cun. So, kita kena buat kalau boleh dekat-dekat dengan 3. Eh. So, katalah saya buat 3. Run. And see the stress. Ah, uh, So, you play around lah. So bila saya ingat tadi, displacement tu memang rugilah sebab kita akan dapat displacement yang kurang sangat. 
Tetapi kita kena compare dengan stress test pula dari segi bahan. Sebab bahan tu boleh tanggung beban sampai 3 megapascal lah. Lebih 3 megapascal dia pecah. Ataupun failure. Uh, so this is your work nanti when you do at industry. Uh, very less work done on manual but more work done by software. But remember, saya pernah beritahu tadi pada kuliah pertama minggu ke-10 kot. Jangan accept your results bulat-bulat daripada komputer. You must verify a bit using manual calculation. Sebab kita takut ada benda yang you tak take care when you do modeling. Uh, di situ berlaku kesilapan dan you terima result ni then it's very wrong. Eh? So sepatutnya you kena verify dengan manual calculation to see whether your answer is uh, more or less equal to theory. Eh? More or less equal to theory. So sebab itu you kena belajar manual juga. Eh? Bukanlah manual tu boleh buang dalam buka, apa, uh, baku sampah. Tak. You kena du juga tahu manual because you want to check Okay, tak kira ni. Eh? Okay, is there any question before we finish our session today? Ada soalan tak? Any questions? Ada? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, so with that uh, words, I think this class has been ended for this week and next week will be our last session lah. Because last, uh, the final week we will do on wall modeling and also slab modeling eh. Macam mana nak modelkan uh, dinding dengan lantai eh. Uh, jangan lupa about your new future, please take your attendance and thank you again. See you next week. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya, ya. Uh, kalau untuk frame kan, sama juga eh, macam beam punya ni. Frame, uh, the BV is like beam. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Hmm, sebab dia boleh benarkan, uh, apa ni, dia boleh benarkan bending, shear dengan axial force. So, beam dengan frame sebenarnya kita dah buat sekali lah tu. Kita dah belajar ini about beam dengan frame sekentak. Okay. Ada soalan lagi tak sebelum saya stop ni? Eh? Uh, tak ada, sir. Okay, if there is